everyone, welcome back to Art Impressions Watercolor Wednesday. This is guest artist Kendra Krebs coming to you this week with a very cute watercolor tutorial. Um, this one we're actually going to be doing a little bit different uh, technique this week. It's not going to be the traditional uh, watercolors using the Art Impressions watercolor series, but we are going to be watercoloring one of our Windows to the World series, and this is going to be the Succulents window. And I'm going to show you how to use your Tombow markers to watercolor any of our, well, you can use any markers. You can use Marbies, Tombows, any, any water-based marker. Um, but we're going to color this little Windows to the World uh, image and you are going to be able to see how to watercolor any of your art impressions images using this technique. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to be using the Canson watercolor paper and there is, well these are both pretty smooth. I'm going to find the smoothest side and then I'm going to use Stazon and stamp an image onto my paper. I have already done that here. So I'm gonna take this image and I have my handy dandy palette here. And I'm gonna use this palette with a little bit of water to color this image. So we are going to start by coloring the little pots. And I'm gonna use first, this is 636 purple. And I'm gonna grab a little bit of water using my brush. It's about the same amount of water. So you're gonna dip once, wipe it on the edge. It's gonna reshape it a little bit. That'll give you a pretty good amount of water. If you need a little bit more, that's totally fine. You can re-dip in there. So I'm gonna take that purple and I'm gonna start with my pots. Now these pots are kind of circular so we know from our watercolor technique that when we do a pot the center needs to have a highlight so we're going to leave that highlight it doesn't need to be perfect it just needs to be there and to accentuate the highlight we are going to darken the edges just like this so i'm just going to continue to grab the less water i have on my brush the more concentrated the color is going to be on my paper. So I can take my brush and just lightly with a little bit of water, blend out the edges just a little bit. And you can see I've graduated from a darker purple into my highlight. And I'm gonna do this all the way across. The next color I'm gonna use is the yellow 993 from Tombow. I'm gonna grab my water and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna do this for all three pots all the way across. And any design work that we do is going to be done at the end once the pots are dry. So I'll take that yellow. And yellow is a pretty uh, light color on its own. So sometimes you need to grab like maybe an orange so I'll grab the 933 orange just to add a teeny bit of dimension. I can mix these two together as I want. That's the nice thing about having this palette is you can mix your colors and having a little bit of that orange is just gonna give us more depth into our yellow. And once again, I left a highlight there. And then moving over, I'm gonna use 565 and color the next pot. The nice thing about the stays on as well is that it is meant to work with water. You can work with water using the stays on and, and the stays on ink isn't going to move. It's going to stay in place. So when you put the water over the top, it's not gonna blend out and cause any issues. I'm gonna take my brush and just lightly pull in those edges. Blend out those edges a little bit. You can see I'm getting a nice circular um, or round sort of dimensional look to these pots now. And then my last one, I'm gonna go in with 526. 
and I'm just going to take that color, that really pretty blue, kind of a sky blue, and just put that right into the pot. These cacti are so cute. I absolutely love them. I had so much fun coloring them when I was prepping for this video. And I'm going to use a couple different greens here. I'm going to use the 177 as well as the 249. That's kind of the pine green color. And I'm going to take also a little bit of my yellow, the 9 what was this, 993, just to lighten up some of those edges. So I'm gonna use my lighter green first. You always wanna kinda go in with the lightest color. So I'm gonna mix the 177 with the 993, just a little bit. And I'm gonna come in and just start gradually placing some of this color into the top portions. Some of this is gonna be yellow heavy because I want it to sort of look like it's shining. I'll do the same thing in here. I'm gonna start with the lighter colors and then as we create depth in the cacti, we can pull in some of the richer greens. But I want this to be kind of yellow up in here. Because the sun is shining down, we want some, some of that warm green. Okay, now I'm gonna take the 249 and just begin to put some of this color in. And the fun part about the cacti is the layering. So whenever I color these in, I do wanna leave white space, just like we've done before in the other Watercolor Wednesday videos, we leave white space because it creates dimensionality. So you can see as I'm coloring this cacti, and I can zoom in just a little bit here, so you can see the tips are left white so that my highlight is kind of showing in. And then when I go back in, maybe I'll use a little bit of the yellow just to emphasize that highlight. So I'm just coming in, creating some color layering shadows just by letting the color dry a little bit and then coming back over it in certain areas. Now I've got that one in. I'm gonna use the same 249 and actually a little bit of black, which is N25. So this is N25. Just to darken up that 249 even a little bit more because I want a nice dark base on this one. Plus it creates kind of a different green as well. And I'm keeping the darker on the base. And then as I move up, I'll pull up that color. Keep this nice and dark down here. Once again, layering the color, letting that be nice and dark. Okay, now that this is pretty much dry, I can come back in with 177 and just begin to kind of blend out some of that yellow. So as I move in, I'm just layering that color. This is a really fun technique. You can do this with any stamp. Just make sure if you do that you're using stays on or, or archival ink so that the colors don't bleed or the, the I'm sorry, the lines don't bleed when you go to add your colors. I'm gonna to continue to kind of move around here. None of these are gonna be the same. You can have a plan and you can be, maybe try to copy something that you've done before, but it's always gonna turn out a little bit different. And that's sort of the beauty of watercolor. 
is you can't duplicate it exactly. You can duplicate the idea, but you can never duplicate the exact image. So you're getting one of a kind pieces every single time. Once again, the 177, just bringing it in darker at the base. So I'm going lightest to dark. And if I want to bring in a little bit of the darker, I can using that black. This is a, a fun project too, because you get to mix colors. You get to use your palette and sort of decide how you want this little image to turn out. All right, I'm gonna come back in with the 526, add a little bit more shadow in here. I think it needs just a, maybe a touch more here, just to offset that highlight. Okay, now I'm gonna come back into this one. A lot of this is, is, a, is a fun kind of game of letting things dry, going back in, letting them dry a little more, going back in and just um, kind of playing with the blending a little bit. Because if you go in here too many times right away, it's just gonna kind of bleed together and you're not gonna get a nice multi-dimensional look. The colors are gonna just blend and then you're not gonna get any depth. So you really, really need to wait until the watercolor layer that you just put in is dry before you come back in. Okay, I'm going to come in here once again with that N25, a little bit of the, I think that was 249 over here. The N25 is the black. They're just kind of mixed in and you can see the tips are lighter, the base is darker, getting a nice multi-dimensional look here. So now that we've got our cacti in, I can put a little bit of the, this is 725. There's a little bloom on this one out here. So I'm going to add 725, that really pretty bright pink to this cacti out here. This is so bright and beautiful. I'm gonna put that on. Just kind of layer that in. And I'm going to take the 177, the, the tip of the marker, and just kind of follow along the lines of that cacti. And it's going to look more in depth. And I can put these little pricklies in if I want to. Just accentuate these, the little spikes. Just like that. I can do the same over here. You could do this with black too if you want, it's up to you. And then if you want to darken any of the areas, you can come back in, that's not the color I want for the end, but you can come back in and kind of add these darker areas using that detail tip of the marker, which is so nice to be able to come in and sort of add those little, those little details. See how much um, more in depth that looks coming back in. I'll do the same over here, just a little bit more. I want a little bit more depth on the bottom, just like that. Okay, now that I have my cacti in, I'm going to add some details to our pots. So I'm gonna take the number 993 yellow and just put these little polka dots in. I then sort of had some fun with this design and put these little details in. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's up to you. I think it's really cute to add these. But if you're nervous to do it and you're feeling like, oh, it's too much, don't worry about it. Just do one um, the, with the traditional coloring in and then the next one you do, maybe add one more little detail that you maybe normally wouldn't do and just challenge yourself a little bit to create something that is maybe a little bit out of your wheelhouse. So I wanna curve this up just a little bit because this is a curved pot. And if we go straight across, it's gonna flatten it immediately. And we don't want flat pots. And I'll take maybe a little bit of that blue and mix it with a little bit of this blue. 
and we'll sort of put some of these across here. It's up to you what you want to do with yours. You can also do just a little, take a little micron and put little dots in here if you want, just kind of around. It's up to you. I like to stipple. I think stipple is really fun. So you can do that if you want. Just just um, let it let your personality shine with that. Okay, now I'm going to take that 993 again. I'm going to give myself a little bit more. And I'm going to use that color to color in our little sun here. And I'm going to use the 636. I'll put that back in there. 636 purple. Oops, let's show that on screen. And I'm going to color in the banner here. And this is going to be a really simple, just light, breezy, leave some white space. Don't overthink this. Put that in the banner. Isn't this cute? Hello. This is such a great card just to say hello or, you know, reconnect with a friend or just thinking of you. Okay, got my little hello in. And then I'm gonna take the 526 marker again. Um, I can put that back in. 526, that's sky blue. And for this part, I'm going to be using this for the sky. So I'm just going to start dabbing in as if we were dabbing one of our vines or our foliage flowers. And I'm just gonna kind of move this blue in between the image. Just bring that in. You can also do wet on wet if you want to with this part, which means you take your brush and just kind of wet this first and then take your color and dab it in. You can totally do that. There's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just how I do it personally but you are free to have fun and do this how you want to. But the beauty in this too is, is you get to choose your own colors. You get to decide what, you know, how, what color scheme you want to use. Do you want to do a complementary color scheme? Do you want to do an analogous color scheme? Are you into the monochromatic that day? What are you feeling? And this is a great way to sort of express that. Okay, so as you can see, I'm sort of keeping it a little bit darker on the edges. Once again, I have to let this dry a little bit before I come back in and add the next layer. So you can see when I've done a pass, I'll finish and then I'll go back to the beginning because I know that beginning area is dry and I can add the next layer. I'm going to come down here, add a little bit of the blue in here. And just drop that in. Come nice and close to the cactus there. Now keep in mind, if you bring this blue too far down, you're going to pull the green up and out, right? So just be mindful. It's no big deal if it happens. It's watercolor. Things move, colors blend. It's okay but just be mindful so you don't get any surprises. And I'm just gonna bring this right on down. Okay, now I have my sky in. I'm gonna take my detail tip of the 993 and just add a little bit of um, a shadow into the sun. And that is pretty much it. How simple was that? I've got a couple other examples here that I did just to show you. So I use the exact same technique on these. How can I show you here? On these two, same technique using the Art Impressions palette, the Tombow markers, and I just went in same steps, made sure that I just started, I went 
greens and I did browns and then I did pinks um, for things like this. So you can uh, jump in, try it, see what you like. These two SKUs or these two images are the uh, covered bridge window here and also the autumn window here. And I had a lot of fun with these. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we will see you next week. Take care. Enjoy. Bye.